I haven't used this fiery mistress in a hot minute. Mmm, blonde. Hey guys, hope you all have been well. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the title, we're going to be talking about ways and tips to not become a makeup hoarder. If you're into makeup at any degree, there is a slight tendency to hold on to makeup just to hold on to it. Now, if you've got no buy, low buy, and minimalism down pack, then this is not the video for you. But for those of you that want to try and hone in in their spending habits or perhaps trying to make better use of their collection and holding on to makeup is a little bit of a struggle, I hope you decide to stay tuned because I'm gonna share with you some tips to curb those habits. First tip, can't talk about it enough low buy or no buy. It's pretty self-explanatory. You set a goal for yourself, whether you're going to have this specific budget or no budget at all. And making that commitment to yourself for whatever length of time that may be allows you to set boundaries for yourself, but at the end have a goal so that you can be proud of yourself for your accomplishments. I personally have done two six month no buys and about two weeks in between and I succeeded and I've learned so much. And a lot of that dealing with the amount of money that I spend on makeup and being more purposeful when I do decide to make purchases and hopefully that can be extended onto you guys because it has worked wonders for me. The next tip is to shop your stash. This is currently a trend on YouTube and I think Samantha Ravendahl has done it and Rob Beauty Christie, bigger YouTube names, have made it become a part of their channels. And it's basically to look at your collection and force yourself to include products, regardless of whether or not they're your favorites, sort of picking and choosing and doing so intentionally so that everything is made use of. And if it doesn't serve a purpose in your collection, then you're able to declutter it, but know the reason for doing so. So if you haven't tried shopping your stash and find yourself just constantly buying, buying, keeping and keeping, give it a go and See how it fares in helping you realize or reason with yourself in keeping particular products. My favorite form is decluttering. I absolutely love decluttering videos. I was watching two whilst I was getting ready to film this video. But decluttering, decluttering does not have to be this lump sum of makeup. It can be a few pieces here and there. But with decluttering, at least for me, my intention, my reason for doing it is always to make sure that everything has a place and if it doesn't, then it will better serve other people who can make more use out of it as opposed to just sitting there because you want to keep it. Now, because this video is for people who want to stop makeup hoarding, I'm trying to help you ease into releasing these items to other people. But if you love collecting makeup, if makeup hoarding is, is not a concern of yours, then I completely understand. Keep what means the most to you. But for those of you out there watching this because you're tired of hoarding, then give decluttering a try if you haven't done so. Don't rush yourself to get rid of a whole bunch of things. If you're ready to do it, great. But if not, try a few pieces here and there. It shouldn't be this frantic thing that, you know, traumatizes you. Take it easy, take it easy. Now this next tip I had done in my previous video, which is kind of totaling up the cost, doing a makeup inventory of your collection. If you haven't done this before, it is very different to attach numbers to products. First of all, counting how many items you have, 10 lipsticks when you look at it together does not look like 10 lipsticks. So realizing the number of pieces that you have, you kind of go like, man, that's a lot. That's a lot for a singular person to hold on to and think that they have a chance of coming close to finishing it. But in addition to that, totaling the cost of your makeup collection mind blown. If you're interested in how I started off before my no buy and where I ended, it's like dramatically different in a nutshell. I've gotten rid of 60% of my makeup collection in a span of a year and a half. And just coming to terms with what you think is an okay amount and what it really is, because it can be two totally different totally different. This next one I'm sure we are all guilty of, but avoid sales if you had no intention of buying anything in the first place. Sales I think are the perfect time to purchase your holy grail daily must-haves, your brow pencils, maybe your concealer, maybe your favorite lip gloss, like things that you use 
all the time. But if you're just gonna buy makeup because this item is on sale and it's popular or is a staple piece in the beauty community, then don't buy it. The sales sections always get people because of the discount. But if you think about it, if you didn't want it in the first place, you are not saving money, you are wasting it. Wait for those 10, 15, 20, 30% off sales where you're purchasing items that you use. Sale, no. Sale section, no. Don't do it, don't. Next up is to resell your makeup. If you have an account, say like Poshmark, that's probably the app that I think is most frequently used to resell makeup. But if you have something that you're holding onto and you're holding onto it because it was expensive, or maybe you feel like by just giving it away to someone else, you're missing out, then try reselling your makeup, especially with powder products that you can just kind of cleanse, give it a bit of a sanitation, spray over, and then sell it to someone who would make use of it. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to make back the same amount of money, but you're also not gonna be losing out because you're gonna be making something back as opposed to it just sitting there collecting dust and serving no purpose at all. So although it's kind of a tough pill to swallow that you spend so much on a product and didn't get so much of a return, allowing yourself to make some of it back so you can take the money and put it towards something else, I think would make you feel better than just having this reminder of like, damn, I really wish I didn't buy you. Now this next one is very near and dear to many people and that's holding on to sentimental items, whether it's something that someone gifted to you, maybe it was your first eyeshadow palette, maybe it's this highlighter that you use in your first YouTube video. A lot of us have certain items that we just cherish, but that may also result in holding on to a lot of things that we don't need to hold on to. If the product is expired, if the product is, I don't know, 15 years on a shelf collecting dust, I think there are other ways to hold on to the memory without actually holding on to the actual product. I think a good idea would be to take a photo of it and create this folder in your you know, laptop or on your phone. And it's something that you can refer to and look back at, but it's not an actual possession. It's not taking up space around you, but there is this visual reminder of the item that meant so much to you. And that concludes today's video. Those are my tips on how to avoid hoarding. If you enjoy hoarding, do your thing. This video was not for you. You go on with your bad self. But for those of you trying to hoard less, I hope that this video is helpful for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. This makeup look can be found on Instagram. First link in the description box down below where I will post a photo of this makeup look along with all the products in the caption. Till the next video, I hope you all are doing well, taking great care of yourselves. I will see you all next time. Bye guys.